you with this. I know you'll be sticking around for the keynotes. That's awesome. So, great job. Great job, guys. Let's give a hand. Better time 
for technology to transform your business and the world. And so with that in mind, we chose the theme for this year to be Your Time Is Now. Together, we're already doing some pretty amazing stuff. Let's take a look. Home to eight billion wondrous beings called humans. And as we spin our way through the cosmos, we come to wonder, who among us will protect our planet? Who among us will solve our problems? Who among us will ensure our future? Who indeed?
So I do want to thank all of you who are here in the uh, arena with us today, those of you who are joining over telepresence in the different sessions, and all of you who are joining online out there. I think there are over 100,000 of you, and we can't tell you how much we appreciate you choosing to spend your time with us. Now, before I get started, I think I have some explaining to do. This whole golf thing is a little annoying. That hundred dollar bill, just so you know, because Kevin brought it up and then G brought it up, and I thought I'd just give you a quick background on it. And I'm gonna have to just make an admission. Because I said that the engineers aren't working as hard. And I think based on what you're gonna see about what's being announced here this week, you're not gonna believe me. So just in full transparency, Kevin Bandy and I did play Barry and David Geckler in a round of golf, and everybody on my team had the opportunity to bet on who would win. And unfortunately, most people on my team were right. And the engineers <laughs> won. Woo! Now, the reason Guillermo, our CIO, was not aware of that event is because he's a scratch golfer, which means he, like, plays perfectly, and that's not what we do. So, Guillermo, you will never be invited. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, David and Barry, I am looking forward to your golf games becoming increasingly worse as we ramp up our speed of innovation over the next year. <laughs> you know, I think that we are living in one of the most unbelievable times. And I have to say that I started my career where you are. And many of you know this, but I started working in IT at a financial institution. I started as a COBOL programmer on an IBM mainframe. And back then, I can tell you, technology was not viewed strategically. We were a cost center. We were a cost center. We were cost of doing business. That's what we were. They put us in the cheapest real estate they could possibly find. We were never in the corporate headquarters. And that's how we started. And then we moved forward. And we saw companies embrace technology to enable the strategy of the company or the organization of the city. We've seen that happen. And that made us feel a little better. And then some organizations even said, I think technology can actually help us differentiate. Differentiate how we bring our solutions to market, differentiate how we deliver citizen services in the case of what, being a city or a country. Well, we could differentiate. And one of the reasons that I think it's such a wonderful time to be where we are right now is because a massive transition has occurred. I used to joke a year or so ago that technology had moved from the basement to the boardroom. But now technology is fundamentally the strategy of every organization. 84% of you just said that technology is the single biggest agent of change that's going on. So we live and we represent the technology that'll change your organization, that'll change cities, that'll change countries, that'll fundamentally change everything about how we live, how we solve problems, how we achieve our objectives. And we're at the middle of that. So this whole notion of thinking about this digital transformation, we have to think about what's required. As you go back to your organizations, what's required for this to be successful, for you to be successful? What's required for your organization to really embark on this journey? Because we hit an inflection point in 2015. We moved through this time where we were discussing what it was. What is IoT? What is IOE? What is digitization, digitalization, all those words? What is it? And we've moved to a place now where every organization is trying to understand what does it mean to me? What does it mean to us? And what should we be doing in the context of all the technology that's available? And that's where all of us come in. 
Now, what's required for you to be successful in your organizations? Number one is it has to start at the top. I fundamentally believe that if you are going to really have an effect on the capability of what the technology can do, beyond what we do today, it has to start at the top. And whether we're in a city with the mayors or in countries with prime ministers or in companies like Cisco with CEOs, you have to have sponsorship. You have to have someone who can see what you see, see what's possible, and to see what opportunity might exist. We also have been talking for years, for the last few years, about IT budgets moving to the lines of business. And I think that while the lines of business may be spending more money on technology, for us to really be successful in the future, IT and the line of business has to come together. We have to be aligned. Because while the business, while even inside Cisco, our sales organization, our marketing teams, they understand what they want to achieve and they understand what technology might be out there, but they don't understand the data privacy issues, they don't understand the security issues, they don't understand the interdependencies between this application and this application. If I go launch a SaaS service over here, I assume that it has access to data that I get somewhere else, and that stuff just doesn't work. I believe this has to happen in Cisco. Our digitization opportunities largely sit in supply chain and our sales organization. And I can tell you there's incredible alignment between our IT organization with Guillermo and every business leader. And that's the way it has to be. There has to be a strategy. What does this technology do? What does it change? How does it change how I think about my business, my business model? Does it change my company from selling a product to selling it as a service? Does it fundamentally change the economics because by connecting things, I can drive a preventive maintenance strategy that I couldn't drive before? If I'm a country or a city, does it allow me to deliver citizen services in a way that will change how I think about building out government infrastructure? I have to have a strategy. And then the two things that I think are going to be most important, number one is security, security, security. You're going to hear an awful lot about that from us this week. And then moving fast and innovating over and over and over and over. Regardless, I'm not talking about technology innovation, business model innovation, challenging the status quo, disrupting yourselves. That's what's going to be required for us to be successful. And all of this is going to be driven by technology. And so the leaders of your organizations are looking to us. And that's why I believe our time is now. Because every one of my peer CEOs that I've gotten to know, a number of them in the last year, I've spent a lot of time with them. They are truly trying to figure out what does this technology mean? There are some of them who have discovered and come to grips with the fact that this technology will fundamentally change how they think about their strategy, their delivery of services, their, their customer interactions. I had one financial institution CEO who rolled out telepresence to every branch to deliver remote expert capabilities around mortgages or loan applications. And he said to me, I've never seen technology that fundamentally lowered my costs and increased our sales all at the same time. Our time is now. And other CEOs and other leaders of organizations are trying to figure out, if I don't have an answer or a strategy, then where is that small group that's starting a company or coming up with a way that's going to fundamentally just rip the heart out of our business? And that's our opportunity. Is our time is right now. And what we believe is that in order to get started, we do believe that Cisco can be your strategic partner in preparing for what needs to occur. Because if you have that executive support, and you have a strategy laid out, and you understand the security opportunities, and you understand the need to be fast and move faster with innovation, if you understand the business connection with the technology, then we believe the first thing you need to do is to go build a foundation to be able to deliver the services. 
Because if you don't, when your organization gets to a place where they're ready to move, you won't be. And the last thing we want to be is the IT group that isn't keeping up with the needs of the business. So we believe that there is a fundamental need to build a digital ready network. All the connectivities. We moved a long time ago from having these perimeter-based enterprises that we all operated in. We moved to this environment where everything is distributed. And it's becoming more distributed. And the great news is all of you who have been working on this technology forever, your skills are going to be in more demand than ever. Because now we're going to connect mining operations. We're going to connect vehicles. We're going to connect vending machines. We're going to connect everything. And at the heart of that is a network that can provide analytics, that can then feed that analytics back to applications, that can then automate the infrastructure based on what it needs. And we have to have security. And I would also argue that one key element of this foundation is collaboration. And Rowan and the team, we were joking earlier, but Rowan's done a great job, his entire team, on building out our collaboration architecture. Because if we're going to get things connected, perhaps first, we should make sure our people are connected. And that we're actually leveraging the capabilities to make our people more productive, to make our people enable them to communicate more effectively, integrate the collaboration capability into every process that we have, every application. I think that's fundamental. There's a reason we have IoT and collaboration together, because I think collaboration and the architecture that's going to be delivered there will be at the heart of so much of what we do with smart cities, with delivery of services, delivery of expertise. So I think collaboration is absolutely foundational. So we'll be delivering it across our portfolio, the network, the next-gen data center, service provider, IoT analytics, and everything that we do moving forward has to be built within the construct of an overarching orchestration and management system. All of our capabilities need to be delivered from a premise-based solution as well as a cloud-based solution, if that makes sense for what you'd like to see us deliver. And it's all based on all the rich software and the operating systems that we've built over the last 30 years as well as our fundamental capability to deliver on hardware and ASICs. Now, there's been a lot of discussion lately about software versus hardware. How many of you think hardware is going away? OK, good. At first, I'm like, no one's raising their hand. But that's actually what I should have seen, I think. <laughs> there is a massive global internet that is getting bigger, that has more traffic, it's going to have more connections. It's going to have more video. It's going to have more content. And I don't think you're going to replace all of that high power performance with just software. So it's a balance. It's a balance. We need to increase and solve problems with software where it makes sense to solve them with software. And you'll see us do that every chance we get, much like what David Geckler has done in security, where 47% of our security portfolio now is delivered via software or as a service, because it makes sense. But we'll have a balance. And in order for us to deliver and be your partner going forward on how this works, we have a multiple-tiered innovation strategy. 